Dr. Bredesen, let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he is internationally recognized as an expert in understanding and publishing information about the actual mechanisms of neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's disease. Uh, he is a graduate of Caltech, then earned his MD from Duke University Medical Center uh, in Durham, North Carolina. He served as Chief Resident in Neurology at the University of California in San Francisco before he joined the laboratory of Stanley Pressner uh, at UCSF, who was a Nobel Prize laureate uh, and um, also was involved uh, at the NIH uh, as a postdoctoral fellow. Uh, Dr. Bredesen has held uh, faculty positions at UCSF, uh, remains at UCLA, as well as the University of California, San Diego. Uh, he is the director of the program on aging at the Burnham Institute before he came to the Buck Institute in 1998 as its founding president and CEO. Uh, he is the chief medical officer of NPI Cognition. The most important genetic risk factor in Alzheimer's is ApoE4. It is a uh, one allele of a protein that carries fats. And so most of us are ApoE3.3, that's the most common one. You can be a 2, 3, or 4, and of course you have one copy from your mother or one copy from your father. And so if you have zero copies of ApoE4, your risk over your lifetime about 9% or so. If you have a single copy, it's about 30%. And if you have two copies, it's well over 50%. So most likely during your lifetime, you will get Alzheimer's disease canonical Alzheimer's disease. So about 65% of all people with Alzheimer's disease have at least one copy of ApoE4. How does this work? We know how we start. The people start with ApoE4. We know how they end up. They end up very commonly with phosphotau, with A-beta. But nobody really understands what's in the middle. It's supposed to be that somehow this thing, which is a fat bucket, this thing that carries around fat, is kind of like your butcher, thing carrying around fat is somehow causing this problem. But that doesn't really give you insight. Why is it? And as Dr. Gundry was mentioning, oh my gosh, this has to do with shortgevity, as we say, very few centenarians who are ApoE4 positive. Why is that? It has to do with inflammation. It has to do with heart disease. It has to do with infection. Why is it? This is an amazing, amazing gene. This is the AHS gene. And why is that? How does this I want to talk about ApoE4 because it is such a critical issue. As I mentioned, it's about 60 to 65 percent of all Alzheimer's patients. It's been clear that it is the major genetic risk factor. And the hope in the future is that nobody with ApoE4 will ever have to worry about Alzheimer's disease again because we will identify people early, get them on the right program, and prevent this problem. But the big problem until recently has been how does it actually confer this risk for Alzheimer's? It's supposed to be literally a fat bucket, a molecule that carries around lipid. And so the question is, how do you start with ApoE4 and you end up with Alzheimer's? That is the canonical case for about 60 to 65 percent of people who have Alzheimer's. There's a big black box in the middle. Alzheimer's is really a protective response. It's just that all the drug companies are trying to get rid of the amyloid. We want to know why you had the amyloid. That's what we want to get rid of, not just get rid. Great to get rid of the amyloid after you get rid of the thing that's causing the amyloid.